The order Diprotodontia is a very specious order, just like the Didelphia morphia and the Desiuromorphia. They're the three most specious of the seven orders of metatherian mammals. And in the table that I give you, it lists seven orders and 20 families of marsupials, one of which is extinct. I want you to know uh, the table for four orders, including these three most species, and also know up to four families in this order, the Diprotodontia, because they're a very important order. Now, I'm going to show you just three of the families here, but you've got a number of other ones, very interesting ones that you can pick from, and I'll be talking about some of them in lecture as well. Uh, so, this is the Diprotodontia. The first family we're going to talk about is the koalas. And so here we have the Fasciolarctidae, and the scientific, scientific name is Fasciolarctus cinereus. And it's got a very distinctive uh, skull shape. It's kind of like a bear like, very solid bear like skull, but very strange um, zygomatic arch. This is the zygomatic arch here. It's got this blade-like formation here on the side and a bit of a, a little sagittal crest along the top here. And then you can see these uh, occipital processes coming down here behind the bully. So there's the foramen magnum and so on. So it's a very distinctive skull. That's the upper part. The lower part of the skull, the dentary, the lower jaw, is equally distinctive. And this is the first time that you get to see the diprotodont uh, condition. You put it on a side so you can see it here. So you have two only, um, one incisor on each side is is um, is left, and you can see it pointing forward here. Okay, this is the diprotodont. It's even more pronounced in the next two species and families we're going to look at, the wombats and the kangaroos. But this is the diprotodont condition. And uh, these are all also, I forgot to mention, these are also syndactylous. So there, um, there's fusion of the second and third digits on the um, hind feet. Now we don't have any hind feet to show you, but you can see there are good diagrams of both the teeth and uh, the syndactyly conditions in your lab manual. So this is the koala skull. It is, it is very distinctive in shape. Okay, it's really strange shape, it's a blocky shape, and it is, okay. okay. The next one we're going to look at now is the, the wombat. I just need to move some of my stuff here. Wombat is in the family Vombatidae, and the species is Vombatus ursinus, ursinus. And you might guess from the species part of the name here, ursinus, that it's a bear-like animal. It's a small, well, it's not that small. It's, um, uh, these animals are squat, and they're very uh, robust, and they're, um, uh, when it was given the scientific name, I guess the comparison was that it was somewhat bear-like. And now we're going to take a look at its uh, at the shape of a skull again. Now remember, we just looked at the skull of the koala, and here you'll see that on the wombat. Now this skull is is oh, it's about fifty percent bigger again than the koala skull. This is a heavy, robust skull. Again, it, again, it's a bone clone. 
fortunately we don't have the real McCoys here, but you can see it's a very solid in structure. Heavy duty zygomatic arch here on both sides. Is press on both sides. Two upper incisors. A whole row of these interesting looking molar molariform teeth. So on. So that's wombat. But check out the lower jaw. The lower jaw is where all the action is taking place. Here's your diprotodont condition. See those two teeth pointing straight forward? That's your diprotodont condition. Look at all those teeth that occlude with that battery of teeth you saw in the upper skull. Remember what we said about the inflected angular process? High, high degree of inflection on the wombat skull here. So. These guys do a lot of grinding of vegetation. These guys are serious herbivores. So they're going to be grinding, grinding up vegetation. Be a lot of movement here. So there you have the wombat. Okay, the last one we're going to look at now is the family Macropodidae. family Macropodidae and various species of Macropus kangaroos. We actually even have a, have a skin here from a, a tan skin from a wallaby. Actually a kangaroo, of, let me see which one is it. Yeah, it's a kangaroo, it doesn't say which, which species it is. Here again, of course, we're dealing with the polyprot or sorry, the diprotodont condition and syndactyly. Now, you don't want to confuse this skull with anything else, and it's it's hard to. This is the uh, skull of a wallaby. You can see the upper teeth here chewing vegetation, cheek teeth likewise for chewing vegetation, grinding vegetation. Um, this gap between the, these incisors and these teeth here and the cheek teeth is called a di diastema or diastema. Lots and lots of mammals have a gap like that and it's natural. Now, you'll notice um, this skull is not nearly as massive as the ones you saw for both the koala and the wombat. Um, but there are a number of different uh, species of kangaroo, including the, the gray kangaroo and the, the big red kangaroo and so on, that have uh, skulls get a lot bigger than this. And uh, you should look at kangaroos as being the equivalent of... Um, of deer in North America and antelope in Africa. They fill the same role in Australia. They're plains grazers. So this is the skull. Now, of course, what you really want to see is the lower jaw. And look at that for a, a diprotodont condition. It's got these two dagger-like lower incisors they're coming straight out just turn around so you can see them this is the diprotodont condition the other thing you'll notice is the eruption of the molars at the rear of the jaw here so 
this is an actual skull. This is not a, a clone. So this animal isn't that old. So as it was maturing, the teeth are, are erupting at the back. Now again, how can you tell it's a marsupial apart from that poly or the diprotodon condition? Look at the angular process. It is it is really inflected. And it, how you tell it's inflected, you look at the of the um, kind of an imaginary line down through the center of, of the um, where the articular surface is and see if there's much bone to the um, lingual side, the tongue side, and you can see that there's a lot of it there. You can see how much it's inflected inside, major inflection. Okay, all right, well that was a tour through the, the monotreme and um, marsupial specimens that we have here too to show you all. Um, it's not the same as having you look at the specimens yourself, but you have an excellent lab manual and you have an excellent textbook. And I'm hoping with a combination of these and my lecture notes and these short videos and the handouts that I give you that um, uh, you'll be um, pretty competent at telling these apart. Uh, the one other thing I would say, there was one other order, I didn't uh, mention one other order of um, marsupials, the no, uh, Notorictia morphia, they have such long names. Uh, they, these are the marsupial moles of Australia. And these are fascinating be beasts. Remember, they're marsupial moles. And there's one family, the Notorictidae, with just two species in them. And I want you to think about convergent evolution. And I want you to be thinking about convergent evolution all the way, way through this course between different types of mammals that are not closely related, not just marsupials with eutherian mammals. There are different types of eutherian mammals that are not related to each other that have evolved similar solutions to, to dealing with their environment as well. So that's all for now.